At the Italian Grand Prix, we witnessed two pieces of F1 history. Max Verstappen became the first driver to win 10 consecutive F1 races, with Red Bull winning 15 straight at the time. Now, it would be very easy to say that this is purely down to the speed of the car that these records are being broken, but as usual in Formula 1, it is not quite as simple as that. Let's delve into the many areas which have caused the Bulls to reign supreme. Now, of course, we must touch on the Red Bull RB19 car and its effect on the team's results, with this machine proving to be as close to perfect as one can be. We've seen lots of championship winning cars, some just as good as this one, some better, and some not so good. But a lot of these title winning cars, even some of the best ones we have ever seen, had weaknesses. The Red Bull cars during the V8 era that won four titles in a row, which had terrifying levels of grip, were normally quite slow in a straight line to the point where their top speed would be one of the worst throughout the field, which at certain races definitely cost them even more victories. The McLarens of the very late 1990s were stunningly quick in the hands of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard, but weren't very reliable, which almost cost them the 1999 Drivers' Championship and certainly did cost them that year's Constructors title. This Red Bull, though, has literally no weaknesses, which is why they have won so many races in 2023. If we focus on the car, they have clearly the most amount of downforce with the car handling excellently in both slow and fast corners, but with having the most grip, have achieved something else with this car that has kept them very comfortable throughout 2023, a very high level of aerodynamic efficiency. They have with this 2023 car not only the most downforce, but a car that is very slippery in a straight line, with it recording normally one of the highest top speeds most weekends. And as we have seen, they have demonstrated a further advantage when DRS is activated. With their DRS advantage, it has now been mostly accepted by rivals that the key here is the ratio of drag that is balanced between the rear wing and the beam wing, with the rear end of the car being so stable that it allows the team to run a smaller beam wing than really everyone else can. This then means that the rear wing for the Red Bull contributes a larger share of the drag the car has, so when the DRS is activated, it sheds more air resistance. I have left an Autosport article in the description where I got this info from, so if you want to check out this story in more detail, then make sure to go to the description. But this system they have devised is really why there is no performance weakness of the Red Bull. But with their two main rivals for the last few years, Mercedes and Ferrari, they haven't exactly put up a great fight against Red Bull, have they? Let's look at why. After a hilarious attempt to win the 2022 World Championship, Ferrari came into this year with a major shift in personnel. Mattia Spinotto was out as team boss with Uncle Fred leaving Alfa Romeo to replace him with Fred Vasseur reorganising the outfit going into and during 2023. Sadly for him and Ferrari, the biggest issue this season has not been wondering what a race strategy is, but having to deal with the ghosts of the Bonotto era as this 2023 car was heavily influenced by the Italian, thus why the team has struggled so much to win more than just one race this season. But what is wrong with this car? Many things it turns out, such as the drivers not knowing what to expect from the car when going into a corner with the car proving too unpredictable for its drivers. We saw back in testing that the car had a snappy rear end which would reoccur during the season at times when the drivers least expected it which is what has led to a lack of confidence in the car when it comes to that part of the car and the handling has seemed to favour one driver a bit more than the other. Unfortunately, it's tending to favour Spaniard Carlos Sainz, as with this Ferrari having also a bit more understeer compared to its predecessor, it has absolutely contributed to a much weaker season from Charles Leclerc. 
The car favouring one driver over the other isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if the car is going to suit only one of your drivers, preferably it needs to suit the better one if you're going to maximise results. Further compounding these problems in 2023 is that they have taken half the season to properly understand the issues with the car, but also compounding their year is the issue of tyres. We have seen in the last year that this type of design Ferrari ventured for has tended to wear their tyres out a lot more than other teams and that issue comes down to a fundamental problem with the design of the car and because the first non-Bonotto influenced car won't be coming until 2024, that is why they are still plagued by this issue. But that isn't the only problem they have found with this year's car when it comes to tyres as they have also witnessed both cars having drastically different performances on the same compounds during the same race. Vasseur commented on this in Miami where the team observed that Leclerc's car performed better on the hard compound tyre and Sainz's car performed better on medium compound tyres. A truly typical Ferrari experience. Leclerc would go on to say himself that his car felt like it was moving quite a lot in high-speed corners when Sainz apparently didn't have quite the same feeling. They would also notice these types of issues with the car being drastically different on different compounds between the two cars and even on one car during a Grand Prix at other races around that part of the season. Thankfully for the Tafosi, the head of chassis development Enrico Card deal, I hope I've said that correctly, said in Zandvoort after the summer break that the team finally understands their problems and will be completely redesigning the car for 2024 to avoid further trouble. But in reality, since the beginning of the ground effect era, Ferrari are the only team that have proven they can design a car that is capable of fighting Red Bull, but have since the first half of 2022 given Red Bull a very easy time. Now, whether that is down to the technical directive given by the FIA last year that maybe changed Ferrari's level of competitiveness or them just not learning from Red Bull's design early enough in 2022, what worked to try and catch up once Red Bull surpassed them, Ferrari have not done their utmost technically to try and beat Red Bull. Red Bull's design concept since 2022 has been superior to the Scuderia, who have had a different concept, which sadly has only won them five races in almost two years. We hope for a reversal of form next season, but they're not the only team that has let Red Bull off the hook. After a dramatic fall-off in 2022 from world champions as a team to third place, with only one race win, Mercedes, we believed, would be one of, if not the most improved team coming into 2023. That possible improvement, though, came down to what the design concept for the year would be. Would they stick with one of the most insane innovations in F1 history, or take massive inspiration from the superior Red Bull design? They decided to continue with insanity. And surprise, surprise, immediately in testing, they were having similar issues with the balance of the car. Then came race one of the season in Bahrain, where they would qualify a stunning 6th and 7th, and only take 5th at best from the race as they finished nearly a minute behind race winner Verstappen over just 57 laps. That's where any hope of a championship this year died, with George Russell proclaiming that Red Bull could win every race in 2023. His teammate Lewis Hamilton, meanwhile, called out his team, saying that they didn't listen to him when he commented on the problems the car had in 2022. The result of this was Mercedes deciding to change their zero-pod concept and brought back James Allison to his previously successful role as technical director. A year and a half wasted on a failed design that we knew didn't work from the first race of 2022. A few races later in Monaco, we saw the new Mercedes concept, which was the team bringing their design more in line with the design of the Red Bull, which at the time was absolutely pulverizing the field. 
Since then, the performance and results has certainly been better, but there are still fundamental issues with the car that cannot really be solved until next year, where you would imagine there will be a complete redesign of the car. At the end of the day, the time Mercedes spent on the failed zero pod design is what has cost them having a chance at further world titles and has given Red Bull such an advantage over Mercedes that the Silver Arrows probably won't be able to catch up before the end of this set of regulations unless they create a rocket ship next year compared to this year's car. You can complain about Red Bull's cost cap overspend relating to 2021 and pretend it is why Red Bull have such an advantage now. But in reality, Ferrari and Mercedes just have not, on the technical side, done a good enough job. Especially when teams like McLaren and Aston Martin have at times surpassed them in 2023 in terms of performance and results. And those two teams, remember, in 2022 were miles slower than Ferrari and Mercedes. But even if Ferrari and Mercedes had a car as quick as Red Bull, they would still struggle to beat them. The reason why is because Red Bull have had incredible reliability in the last year and a half, which is why they so rarely DNF from races. They never have a problem with their pit stops, with them regularly conducting two to two and a half second pit stops. Their race strategies are always on point and have rarely failed. And of course, have currently the most consistent and best racing driver in the world. And as mentioned earlier, have the most important thing you need, the fastest car. They are, as a team, as close to perfect as you can be, which is why they have won 32 of the 38 races since the start of 2022. They may not be able now to win every race in 2023, but they will surely win every race between now and the end of the season, and will probably win 85% of the races between now and the end of these regs at the end of 2025. They are truly unstoppable, and once this reign of dominance ends, we will look back at this Red Bull team as possibly the greatest team, at least operationally, that has ever existed in Formula One.